He is known for his contributions to evolutionary biology and his proposition that all species of life have descended from a common ancestor. He is recognized for introducing the scientific theory of natural selection, which explains the branching pattern of evolution. His name is Charles Darwin. In the vast expanse of the natural world, one man's journey would forever change the course of scientific understanding. Charles Darwin, an English naturalist, embarked on a voyage of discovery aboard the HMS Beagle. Little did he know that his observations would lead him to propose a revolutionary theory that would shape the foundations of biology. Driven by a deep curiosity and a passion for the natural world, Darwin's expedition took him to various corners of the globe. As he collected wildlife specimens and fossils, he was perplexed by their geographical distribution. Inspired by these puzzling observations, Darwin began to piece together a theory that would challenge the prevailing beliefs of his time. In 1859, Darwin published his groundbreaking book, On the Origin of Species, presenting compelling evidence for his theory of evolution. He proposed that all species of life are connected, descending from a common ancestor through a process he called natural selection. This idea, now considered a fundamental concept in science, revolutionized our understanding of the diversity and interconnectedness of life on Earth. Darwin's theory faced initial skepticism and resistance, but over time, his ideas gained traction and acceptance within the scientific community. His work paved the way for the modern evolutionary synthesis, which established natural selection as the primary mechanism driving the evolution of species. Charles Darwin's legacy is one of scientific enlightenment and intellectual bravery. His exploration of the natural world and his proposition of evolution through natural selection continue to inspire generations of scientists and thinkers, reminding us of the interconnectedness of all living beings and the beauty of the evolutionary process. Charles Darwin, a young and curious boy with a taste for natural history, was born into a family of prominent abolitionists in Shrewsbury, England. His grandfathers, Erasmus Darwin and Josiah Wedgwood, had already expressed ideas about evolution and common descent. Raised in a largely Unitarian family, Charles attended the local Unitarian church with his mother after his father, a free thinker, had him baptized in the Anglican church. It was during his time at the Unitarian school that Darwin's passion for natural history and collecting began to flourish. In 1825, Darwin embarked on a journey to the University of Edinburgh Medical School to pursue a career in medicine. However, he found the lectures dull and surgery distressing, leading him to neglect his studies. It was during this time that he had the opportunity to learn taxidermy from a freed black slave named John Edmonstone, who had accompanied Charles Waterton on his expeditions in South America. Darwin's interest in natural history continued to grow, and he joined the Plinian Society, where he engaged in lively debates about science and religion. In 1828, Darwin's father, disappointed with his neglect of medical studies, sent him to Christ's College, Cambridge, to study for a Bachelor of Arts degree. Although Darwin was unqualified for the tripos exams, he immersed himself in his newfound passion for riding, shooting, and collecting beetles. Through his second cousin William Darwin Fox, Darwin became friends with botany professor John Stevens Henslow and other parson naturalists who saw scientific work as a form of religious natural theology. During his time at Cambridge, Darwin delved into the works of William Paley, particularly his book, Natural Theology, which argued for divine design in nature. He also studied John Herschel's preliminary discourse on the study of natural philosophy and Alexander von Humboldt's personal narrative, which inspired him to contribute to the field of natural history. In preparation for his future travels, Darwin joined geology courses and embarked on mapping expeditions with his mentor Adam Sedgwick. Charles Darwin, a young naturalist with a passion for exploration, found himself at a crossroads in his life. After leaving Sedgwick in Wales, he received a letter from Henslow proposing an extraordinary opportunity, a place as a naturalist on the HMS Beagle, a ship embarking on a survey voyage to chart the coastline of South America. Despite his father's objections, Darwin was convinced that this journey held the key to uncovering the mysteries of the natural world. As the voyage began on a brisk December day in 1831, Darwin's excitement and curiosity were palpable. He was determined to make the most of his time on land, conducting geological investigations and collecting specimens for further study. His meticulous notes and observations would lay the foundation for his groundbreaking theory of evolution. Even though he suffered from seasickness, Darwin persevered, writing copious notes and studying marine invertebrates, all while contemplating the grandeur of the world around him. Throughout the journey, Darwin encountered various landscapes and witnessed the wonders of nature. From the volcanic cliffs of St. Iago in Cape Verde to the tropical forests of Brazil, he marveled at the diversity of life. However, he was also confronted with the harsh realities of slavery, which ignited a passionate debate with the ship's captain, Fitzroy. These experiences shaped Darwin's understanding of humanity's interconnectedness and the potential for societal progress. Darwin's journey took him further south to Patagonia, where he made a significant discovery. 
Among the fossil remains of extinct mammals and modern seashells, Darwin realized that species could become extinct without any signs of climate change or catastrophe. This revelation challenged prevailing theories and set him on a path to explore the concept of evolution. As he ventured into the interior, interacting with native and colonial people, Darwin gained insights into the social and cultural dynamics of different communities, further fueling his belief in the shared origin and potential for improvement among all humans. In Chile, Darwin experienced a powerful earthquake that revealed the dynamic nature of the Earth's crust. He witnessed seashells high in the Andes Mountains, evidence of the land's gradual rise. On the Galapagos Islands, Darwin sought evidence of wildlife linked to an older, center of creation, discovering distinct mockingbird species on each island. These findings, along with encounters with unique creatures like the marsupial rat kangaroo and the platypus in Australia, challenged traditional beliefs about the fixed nature of species. Throughout his voyage, Darwin's mind was filled with questions and possibilities. He saw firsthand the intricate workings of nature and the interconnectedness of all living beings. His experiences aboard the HMS Beagle laid the groundwork for his revolutionary theory of evolution. Darwin's journey serves as a reminder that curiosity, observation, and an open mind are essential tools for navigating the complexities of life and understanding our place in the natural world. Life will recur in exactly identical fashion, Darwin once said, recognizing the patterns and cycles that shape our existence. His voyage on the HMS Beagle not only transformed his own life but also continues to inspire us to explore, question, and seek knowledge in our own daily lives. On October 2, 1836, Beagle anchored at Falmouth, Cornwall. Charles Darwin, filled with excitement and anticipation, hurriedly made his way to Shrewsbury to visit his home and see his relatives. Eager to share his discoveries, he then embarked on a journey to Cambridge to seek the guidance of his mentor, Henslow. Henslow advised Darwin on finding naturalists who could catalogue his animal collections and examine the botanical specimens he had collected during his voyage. Darwin's father, recognizing the importance of his son's work, provided the necessary investments for him to continue his scientific pursuits as a self-funded gentleman scientist. With newfound confidence, Darwin visited various London institutions, sharing his collections and seeking the expertise of experts to describe them. However, he soon realized that British zoologists were overwhelmed with a backlog of work due to the extensive natural history collecting throughout the British Empire. In the midst of his journey, Darwin had the privilege of meeting renowned figures in the scientific community, including Charles Lyell and Richard Owen. Lyell introduced Darwin to Owen, an anatomist with access to the facilities of the Royal College of Surgeons. It was with Owen that Darwin made astonishing discoveries, including the existence of gigantic extinct ground sloths and the megatherium he had previously identified. Owen's findings also included a hippopotamus-sized rodent-like skull named Toxodon and armor fragments from Glyptodon, a massive armadillo-like creature. As Darwin immersed himself in his research and the classification of his collections, he began to develop groundbreaking ideas. His first paper presented evidence of the slow rising of the South American landmass, which he shared with the Geological Society of London in January 1837. Simultaneously, he presented his mammal and bird specimens to the Zoological Society, where ornithologist John Gould made an astonishing revelation. Gould identified the Galapagos birds that Darwin had initially thought to be a mix of blackbirds, crowbeaks, and finches as twelve distinct species of finches. Inspired by these new insights, Darwin delved deeper into his studies. By March 1837, a mere six months after his return to England, he began speculating in his red notebook about the possibility of one species changing into another to explain the geographical distribution of living and extinct species he had encountered, such as the rheas and the strange extinct mammal, Macrochenia. He even sketched the concept of branching descent, envisioning a single evolutionary tree where no animal could be deemed higher than another. Little did Darwin know that his journey was just the beginning of a revolution in scientific thought. His philosophy of evolution would eventually shape our understanding of the natural world and our place within it. As we navigate through our daily lives, Darwin's evolutionary theory reminds us of the interconnectedness of all living beings and the importance of embracing change and adaptation for survival and progress. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.